Now we talk about the important topic of the different allocation schemes on this. What do we mean by allocation schemes? We mean how do we allocate blocks for a file? So we have this file. We have a file that corresponds that uh, that consists of many blocks. Block one, block two, through block n. And each block is 512 bytes. So how do we map these two blocks on this? We will see, you know, here we will face some of the some of the problems that we have faced in memory management. So we we'll see the same problems or similar problems. And we'll see that many of the concepts are the same. So first we will look into contiguous allocation. Contiguous allocation is, you know, for this file that consists of n blocks, you know, let n be 100. It consists of 100 blocks. Now in contiguous allocation, we would like to find uh, 100 contiguous blocks on this or 100 contiguous sectors on this. So, for example, you know, we have here a file with the name count, starts at block 0, and it consists of two blocks. So it's blocks 0 and 1. <coughs> file TR starts at block 14, and it consists of three blocks, 14, 15, 16. So each file has a contiguous sequence of blocks on this. Now, what was the problem that faced us when we considered or studied contiguous memory allocation, contiguous allocation in memory management? Fragmentation. Yeah, fragmentation. And we have the same problem here. Right. So the same problem. You, know, you are looking for, this is a file that consists of 100 blocks. So in order to, to do contiguous allocation, you must find you know, 100 adjacent blocks. You, have, you, must have a, you must find a chunk of 100 blocks that are contiguous on this. And these may not exist. You, know, you may have a few blocks here and a few blocks there, uh, 20 blocks here and 15 blocks there. You have a lot more than 100, but they're not contiguous. So we have an external fragmentation problem. But this contiguous memory allocation has great advantages. You know, we will see an, a way to get around or to, sorry, to uh, uh, alleviate the external fragmentation problem for contiguous allocation. But let's first talk about the great advantages of contiguous memory allocation. In studying disk allocation schemes, we look into two kinds of disk accesses. We look into sequential access, and we look into random access. What's sequential access? Sequential access is just like accessing the entire file accessing all blocks in the file sequentially. Random access is accessing a specific block. It's like, you know, for example, accessing block number 79. We are interested in accessing block 79. So random access, fast random access, it, you know, is a way of, or a certain allocation scheme offers fast random access if it allows you to directly go to block 79 without having to go through all of them. So random access, accessing a specific block, sequential is going through all blocks. Now, contiguous allocation is good for both. It's good for sequential access and it's good for random access. What do we mean by good? When we, when good means that the, the head motion Head movements are going to be very limited with contiguous access, with contiguous allocation. Of course, we will not fully appreciate this until we look 
into the other allocation schemes in which we will see that there will be uh, a huge amount of head movement. Remember that the head of the disk will have to move. So if your blocks are adjacent, this will minimize the head movement. <coughs> in fact, if blocks 0 and 1 happen to be on two sectors on the same track, then there is zero head movement. Well, you know, zero between zero and well, you, the, the head will have to move to get to the first block, but once it gets to the first block, it doesn't have to move again to get to the second block because they are on the same track. Remember the track and the head? So once the track is on, once, once the head is on this track, it can access all the sectors on this track, and you will only need the rotational uh, movement. Okay, so minimal head movement with both sequential and random. In fact, with random here, uh, since you save for each, you know, we, you know the start block for each file, getting to block number 79, or in general the kth, the kth block in a file, you can directly get to block 79 without having to go through all of them because you can calculate the, you know, which block is block 79. So if, you know, if, if I know that block one, the start block for this file is block number 10, then block 79 is gonna be, you know, 10 plus 79. Uh, so it's gonna be 78 if we start from zero. This is block zero. If it's block one, then it's 78. Uh, so if we're starting from block one, then it's gonna be eight. So, but I know, if I know the start block, I can calculate which block is block 79 within that file. And I can go directly to that. I don't have to go through all of them because they are sequential. It's just accessing an array. You can access any element in an array without having to go through the entire array, unlike a list. Now the next, well, well before we get to the next, we talk about uh, you know, the extent-based system, which is an, uh, an extension or an improvement of contiguous allocation, where you, uh, you let each file, you allow it to consist of one or more extents. So for example, I have this file that currently consists of three blocks. Block one, block two, and block three. And then this is taken. Now the file grows, and I need a couple more blocks for this file. Now the file grows, and I need blocks four and five. And I don't find, I can't find, you know, two contiguous blocks to extend, uh, you know, this chunk that I have for the file. What do I do? Well, I just create another extent where, you know, this is block four and this is block five. And then I introduce a pointer from block three to block four. So this file now con consists of two extents. This is extent number one and this is extent two. So each extent is a chunk of blocks and each extent points to the next extent. So this is a generalization. So this will get around the problem of fragmentation. All right, so if you need two more blocks, they don't have to be contiguous, they don't have to be adjacent to these three. Find another chunk of two blocks and then link them together. Okay, so this is the extent-based uh, system, but still, within, within each chunk, you have contiguous allocation. Now, linked allocation, in linked allocation, you just, you, you don't care about contiguous blocks. Uh, you know, if a file consists of 100 blocks, then you can find any 100 blocks and you link them together. Each block just points to the next. So this file here starts at block nine. 
So here's block nine. Now block nine will have a pointer to the next block, which happened to be block 16. And block 16 has a pointer to the next block, which happened to be block one. And then the next block is a block 10 and so forth. Okay, so let's focus on understanding the advantages and disadvantages of the linked scheme. So in terms of, well, let's talk about the advantages. You know, in terms of external fragmentation, does this have an external fragmentation problem? No. No, it doesn't have an external fragmentation problem at all, right? Remember, external here, we fragmentation, you know, at the block level. Now, fragmentation within a block, that's internal fragmentation. But any block here can be useful. There will be no wasted blocks. You can use any block so because you are just linking blocks together. So there is no external fragmentation. Now, so fragmentation is good. No external fragmentation. What about sequential access and random access? Sequential and random. So in terms of sequential access, how does this compare to contiguous? Worse. Is it much or worse? It's better or worse? Worse. Much worse. Because think about head movements. You know, in contiguous, the blocks are adjacent, so the head movement is minimized. Here, you know, the head can be moving back and forth and uh, you know, going from uh, 9 to 16, then all the way to 1, then going to 2, and then uh, going uh, to 25, and so forth. Okay, so it's from sequential, there will be lots of head movements. For random access, you know, random access is getting to block, say, 79 in a given file. Can you get to block 79 directly here? No, no. no you'll have to traverse this list basically. This is a linked list and you will have to traverse it. You have to go from block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 until you get to 79. So there is no way here for you to get to 79 uh, directly. So very bad random access. <coughs> now an improvement in the linked allocation scheme is the FAT idea. And the FAT idea you know, FAT stands for File Allocation Table. So FAT is introducing a header to the volume, for each volume, that has the links in it. So the links are in the FAT. So this FAT is, okay, this is the FAT, this is linked. So in FAT, you will have, this is your fat table, and this is your linked. Now in linked, you just have the data blocks linked to each other. You know, block one for this file, pointing to block two, and block three maybe here. So two points to three, and block four is here. So this is linked. Now in the FAT, you will, you will not have the actual data blocks. You will just have numbers. So you will just have one pointing to two, and two pointing to three, and three pointing to four. So here in the FAT, you'll just have block numbers waiting, uh, pointing to each other. Just block numbers. You will not have the actual data. Here, the actual data blocks are pointing to each other. So these are actual data blocks pointing to each other. Here, block numbers pointing to each other. Now, what's the advantage here? What's, what's the point in, do, in, in having block numbers? point to each other. 
to eliminate external fragmentation because... But we, we already don't have external fragmentation with the link scheme. With the link scheme, there is no external fragmentation. We have the external fragmentation with the contiguous scheme. But what's the point in having these pointers between numbers here? Yeah. You're not bouncing all around the disk, changing, you just look through the list. Or yeah, exactly. That and find out which one. So this is basically for improving, you know, uh, for improving which kind of disk access. This improves, does this improve random or sequential? Both. No, with sequential, you'll still have to, you know, to go to the actual blocks, right? So if you are, uh, because these blocks are gonna be on the disk, uh, you know, th they will be the same thing, uh, like block one, block three, block two, then block four. So for sequential, you still have to make lots of uh, head movements. But this is very good for random, because if you are interested in getting to block 79, you only traverse the list here in this limited section of the disk. So the traversal only happens here when you are when you're looking for block 79. Very limited head movement. And in fact, it's even better than that because this fat is very small. You can cache it, you can put it in memory. And the, the traversal will be even faster. Okay. So the fat, the main purpose of the fat is improving random access. So that you traverse within a limited section instead of traversing all over the disk. <laughs> And you can cache this because it's small. Okay, so the next idea, the third allocation scheme is indexed allocation, where the file will still consist of blocks that are scattered all over the disk, but each file will have an index block that has the numbers of the blocks that make that file. So for this file, you know, block 19 is the index block that, it, that says this file consists of block 9 as the first block, block 16 as the second block, block 1 as the third block, and so on. So this, uh, you know, definitely this doesn't have an uh, external fragmentation problem because it's just like linked. But it's... Uh, you know, it has an advantage from uh, random access point of view. Right? Because for, from random access point of view, it's even better than the fat. You don't have to traverse. So on this block, you just go, if you are interested in block 79, you go to index 79, index 79 in the index block, and index 79 is gonna tell you which block is the 79th block for that file, okay? So it gives you, you know, good random access and still no external fragmentation. Yeah. So with this, if you get the block on the first try from random access, you pretty much have access to all the, the rest of the blocks? Uh, yeah, so each file will have this one block, <coughs> one index block, and it has all the block numbers in it, yeah. So you can get, you can have good random access. Now, what's that uh, disadvantage of this? So who can identify the disadvantage of this technique? You can store everything in one spot, necessarily? Yeah, exactly. If the file is huge, you can't fit all the blocks in one block. And we'll see a solution to this. 